Oh, hey, how you doing? We're talking about mics today. Now, I've mentioned this before on stream and in a couple of YouTube shorts, but particularly when I'm streaming, I actually use two mics. I use this one and this one. So this is the Audio-Technica AT2040, and this is the Rode NTG1. Now, as you can see, they are very different mics. This one is a dynamic mic, whereas this one is a shotgun mic, a condenser shotgun mic to be more specific. And basically what this video is about is the difference between condenser shotgun mics and dynamic mics. So the main difference is how they are structured internally. And a dynamic microphone uses electromagnetism. Basically, as the sound wave hits the diaphragm, which is what will vibrate upon sound hitting it, a metal coil suspended between magnets will move and if you know anything about electromagnetism or physics in general that'll cause an electrical signal so that's basically how dynamic microphones turn sound into an electrical signal that we can then run to our computer or whatever condenser mics on the other hand don't use magnets but instead use what is called a backplate behind the diaphragm and if an electrical charge is applied to both of them it creates a charge between them this is why condenser microphones need phantom power, which is, is literally just a small current of power from the interface that is plugged into via the XLR cable. Now, not only is this mic a condenser mic, it is also a shotgun mic, as you can see by the shape of it. These types of microphones are highly directional and they have a decent amount of reach because of how they're built and the, the structure of them. Generally, you know, the longer ones will be able to reach further, which kind of makes sense, you know. And one of the primary differences between dynamic and condenser microphones is that because of the phantom power supplied to a condenser microphone, it is able to pick up smaller sounds more accurately and doesn't need as much gain from an interface. Whereas a dynamic microphone, because it doesn't have that power, it's generally going to be a bit quieter and less sensitive, but that means it does deal better with closer sound and louder sound. Whereas a condenser microphone doesn't deal as well with louder sounds, but is more sensitive so it can pick up more detail. Now, one big thing with audio is pickup pattern, and that is particularly prevalent with a shotgun microphone like this. And what the pickup pattern basically is, is how it picks up sound in space. So as you can see, this microphone is pointed right at me, but if I point it away, you can't hear that well. So this shotgun mic is known as a super cardioid and cardioid is just one of the pickup patterns super cardioid is just much much tighter so it, it is very directional to pick up mostly from just in front with some from the sides but it's going to be way quieter when we talk over this side and then it'll get louder again as it pointed directly at me if i point over the other side it's going to get quieter again this dynamic mic on the other hand the audio technica at2040 is a hypercardioid so it's actually almost as directional as the shotgun mic. So as you can see, it's pointed directly at me and you can hear it pretty well, but if I turn to the side, it gets significantly quieter. And then again to the other side or on the top, you know, it's, it's meant to be pointed at the direction of the sound for the most part. However, it can be used almost as a side address, but I am sort of talking right in front of the mic. So it is picking it up quite well. Whereas if I actually talk to the side of the microphone, you can, you can hear that difference there. Another thing too with the difference between these mics is the power supplied to a condenser mic, yes, it gives much more sensitivity, but that'll also come with background noise in a lot of cases. So not only are they more able to just have general background noise, but also pick up other sounds within the space that it's recording in. And one of the big, the easiest examples in how I use microphones is a keyboard or controller making noises when I'm gaming or typing or something like that. So right here I have my mouse and it is making normal clicks, but if I have it over here while I'm talking, I'm, I'm still clicking it. You probably can't really hear that very well. But if I switch over to this mic and then start clicking the mouse, even though it's not right in front of the mic like it is now, you can still hear that background noise because it is picking up more sound from around. And you can kind of tell that as well. Like, obviously, this mic is meant to be talked directly into the front of, but you can see all these vents on the side. They do allow sound in from the side, and that's sort of the idea. It's not meant to be 
only from that one direction. It's meant to pick up a little bit of the extra sound around to sound a bit more natural. And that is one of the reasons why I use it. And like I mentioned before with the gain levels, I currently have the gain knob on this interface turned to around 60% of its full range because it is a condenser mic and it does have that phantom power so it does not need as much gain as the dynamic mic. However, if I leave the gain level the same and switch to this mic, it is significantly quieter, so I do have to turn it up significantly to get a similar sort of volume. So that is also one thing to note, particularly with dynamic microphones, very common microphone is the Shure SM7B, which is known to be a very gain-hungry microphone. You do need to be putting a lot of gain into it to get uh, enough volume, and that's just inherent with most dynamic microphones. It's just something you have to have to deal with, so make sure your interface has enough gain, or use a signal booster like a cloud lifter or something like that. That's kind of what they're for. So if you've seen my streams, you probably have seen me use both of these mics, or at least heard, because you don't really see this microphone in the shot at all, because it is boomed over my monitor directly out of the shot. And I use that microphone when I'm just sitting there talking, but whenever I start playing any games, that's when I'll switch over to this microphone, because you do not want to be hearing my controller clicking the entire time while I'm gaming, that gets very annoying. And the couple of times that I have forgotten, you notice it, you really do notice it. Oh. And that's what prompted the previous videos that I've made on this topic. Other more general uses of these two different types of microphones is, like I mentioned, condenser microphones are able to pick up a lot more detail. So they are used a lot more in studio contexts where you can control everything you want to hear that fine details of not necessarily super loud things, whereas dynamic microphones often used if the audio source is quite loud, such as like drums or something like that. That being said, you can use both for, you know, most things. It's just some might work better for others. And when it comes to shotgun microphones, these are very commonly used on film sets and stuff like that. And everyone's seen a boom microphone being held overhead in a dead cat over the top of a scene when in the behind the scenes of a movie or a TV show or something. That is probably the most common use for microphones like these, as well as in studio setups. Like, I, I don't know if you'd call mine a studio, <laughs> really, but uh, having it boomed out of frame is good because you can have it a bit further away than you can with a dynamic microphone, unless you're just adding a heap of gain to it, then it'll be very noisy and it probably won't pick up very well. Dynamic microphones are often also used in podcasts because you can just have the microphone in your face and it doesn't really matter that much, as well as on radio as well. When you're just trying to do vocals and it doesn't matter if you have a microphone in your face, dynamic microphone is very often the go-to. And I've said this before, but the reason that I use both is I, one, just like the idea of having that variety of not just having a microphone in my face the entire time. But also I, I do like the sound of a shotgun mic. It sounds a little bit more natural, even though you can hear a little bit more of the room, but that's also kind of what makes it sound more natural. And the way I've been using this mic in this video is not how it would normally be used. You wouldn't normally hold a microphone like this. You would have it boomed like I usually do on an arm right above my monitor, just out of frame. And usually in these types of videos, I do that. But because it's a video about the mic, I thought I might as well have it in frame and, you know, make use of my six meter long XLR cable that allows me to go over here and it's still fine. Although I do have the camera on manual focus now, so not in focus back there. So to finish off with, I'm just gonna give you a quick tour of my audio setup. I have the NTG-1 mounted on a boom arm directly above my monitor, so it is just out of frame whenever I'm streaming, and that is pointed down around towards my chest, so we don't want to get too much background noise from behind me, it wants to be more from just me. And that is plugged into the Rode AI-1 interface, which I also have my headphones plugged into so I can directly monitor this microphone if needed. And then I also have the Audio-Technica AT2040 on a Rode PSA-1 boom arm that I can then move around and have mounted close to my face while I'm streaming. And that is plugged into an Elgato Wave XLR. Now, ideally, I would like to get something like a Rodecaster Pro 2 so I could have both microphones plugged into the same interface and control everything from there. Currently, that's not really high on my priority list with what to do with my money right now. So maybe one day, but right now, we're not doing that. From there, everything then goes into the Elgato Wavelink software, which comes with the Wave XLR. So then I can then route everything through that and I have full control over volumes and muting and 
everything like that. And I can also add effects to the microphone. So, so far you've been listening to just effects that I've added in post. And here is a little clip of no effects for this mic. And here is a clip of no effects for the NTG one. That'll be the end of this one. If you liked it or found it helpful, hit the like button, go watch other videos and see you next time. Okay. Bye. I'm going to go back over here now. I'm just going to take the cable with me because I can. This is literally the only reason that I bought this cable. It was either six meters or one meter and I knew six meters would come in handy. Don't turn on your phantom power on a dynamic mic. That's, that's not what you want to do.